Hello, this is going to be a code walkthrough of a Python uh, program I've been writing. I've been following this book, um, Python 3 Object Oriented Programming, and uh, they had at the end of the second chapter they said, well, go ahead and make your make a simple object oriented program in Python. So I basically took an audio, I call it an audio scraper. It pulls out the um, basically the RTP layer from a um, packet capture and um, it converts that stream into a raw audio file. That's all it does at this point but um, it's actually pretty cool because to do that is pretty complex. It's easy to do it in Wireshark because in Wireshark it's built to do that but let's say you're on a server and you don't have Wireshark you just have T Shark or you know TCP dump and you want to convert a, you know a VoIP phone call into you know pull the audio out of it to for analysis well this will do it and this will do the analysis part um, and I'll just walk through it real quick this is the actual uh, scraper uh, the first thing I do is I import PySharp, which is basically a Python wrapper to T Shark. I did have some problems with it. It wasn't fully Python 3 compatible, so I had to modify a few files inside of it to make it work with Python 3. As I move down, you can see that um, I'm taking in three values as uh, variables PCAP, filter, and out file. I probably should have named filter something else because that's a Python, you know, method. But anyway, um, those are the three uh, variables that are user supplied. The scraper itself starts off. This is the method for it. The uh, I define scraper, and I'm basically setting up an empty array. And in that array, I'm going to throw in basically. Um, the hex values from the RTP audio. So first thing I do is I define the PCAP file. Right now I'm hard coding a path that should be a relative path but it's being hard coded for now and I'm just putting in the PCAP that's provided, the name, and the out file that's provided by the user. Um, next thing is I define a variable called filter type as the filter and then I basically put in here and the reason there's a reason I did that instead of just putting self dot filter in there um, I had a problem with the quotes that are required here so instead I just define a filter type as self dot filter and a variable called cap which is uh, here's where we use PyShark cap pi shark file capture pcap file display filter equals and normally you would have quote rtp in this case um, I'm putting it in there as user defined I guess in this case if you're scraping audio the only layer you would get in a pcap is rtp but I put that as user definable to make it a little more generic so that at some point in the future someone might want to scrape something else out of the PCAP. So really this should be called PCAP Scraper. And they have the choice of scraping audio or some other um, uh, layer in the packet capture. But in the case of audio, um, I basically take uh, the raw audio, I design a, define a variable uh, and assign it to opening uh, an output file and the output file is user supplied so this is the out file so I'm setting up the out file and I'm writing to it and the WB means I'm writing out bytes instead of just writing it's writing bytes out and here's where the core logic is for I in cap I'm going to try to find uh, RTP 
and I define RTP as being I and I'm basically looking for um, the third index in the uh, RTP. So if we look back, uh, I is the actual PyShark uh, capture of um, the, the PySharp loading in of the packet capture file. And it loads it in and filters all the RTP channel uh, layer. So when you get it, it just will show when you if you were to just run this, you would get a bunch of output all about the RTP layer of that packet capture. So I'm now filtering this down to the third indexed element, which actually the fourth, right? Uh, so the fourth element within the packet capture. And that happens to be an element that contains the payload. All right, so we really just want the payload. We don't want anything else. So if the rtp.payload, if it exists, if there is a payload, and that's important because sometimes there won't be a payload. Um, if, if the call ended or something happened on the call, there may not be a payload, but there could be an RTP um, layer there. So if there is an RTP layer, go ahead and take that RTP list that we defined and that's up here, it's that empty array and append the RTP payload but we're going to split on the colon before, you, before we split it, if we didn't split it we would get um, I don't think we need to split it but if you don't split it you would get uh, hex values um, and you'll see them on the screen in a minute and they're just like um, it'd be like FF colon FF colon FF colon you know DE colon DE colon FF it'd be like that and I basically split on it and um, put all of those into this RTP list array that's your hex values um, I don't care about exceptions so I don't want to hear about them so I just say if there's an exception just pass it we come down here and I say for RTP packet, okay, in RTP list. So in that RTP list, um, we're going to define a variable for each. Um, uh, we actually, I should mention that the reason I'm doing this second for loop is because the RTP list will become a uh, multi-dimensional array. So I'm handling that here for RTP packet in RTP list the packet equals and I'm taking the space you know I'm just taking the spaces and joining um, joining that to make one um, stream and then I'm basically printing I'm defining a variable called audio which that should be called raw audio is the byte array from hex so I'm converting the hex to bytes of packet and packet is this join here for each of the multi-dimensional array well, let's just call it each of the subarrays of the multi-dimensional array is going to be brought in and joined into one file and we're going to write it out that's it so that's the core logic that does all the work. There's a menu, just for fun, because I was following this uh, exercise, and it basically is going to uh, give a user a prompt, and it says, hey, what do you want to do? And you say, well, I only have one, two choices, scrape audio from a PCAP or quit. You know, I was thinking of adding in more functionality here to this program where you could scrape other things out of the PCAP. But in this case, we just have one option. And I'm basically saying that, you know, a simple menu, um, we're going to collect an action, and basically we are looking, when a user selects one, to look for the audio scraper method, which is here. So when they select one, we're going to prompt the user, enter the name of your PCAP file. 
and we're assigning that value to pcap. Then we say, what layer do you want to filter on? And that becomes the variable filter type. And then provide your desired output file name. And that becomes output file. And then we make the call to the audio scraper class. And we say, go ahead and instantiate that class and pass in the pcap, the filter type, and the output file, and run the scraper method. The scraper method back where we were is the core of what we were look, just looking at, all that logic. OK, back here, if they choose option 5, then it will quit the program. All right. And just make sure that this actually runs. So I do have a PCAP in my file folder. It doesn't really have a lot of audio in it. It has a little bit of audio in it. Um, I, I can open it up in Wireshark and, and hear some of the audio. I'm going to go ahead and run this, and we can see what this will do. So I'm running the menu. And as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and say scrape audio. PCAP file is called my PCAP. Uh, RTP and the output file name. Let's call it um, test.raw. And there we go. See, that's all the hex values. It's done. So basically, if we go back to the output here, we're going to see that it started off, found the PCAP. It found it pulled the PCAP into in PyShark. PyShark basically filtered on the RTP channel, and all this hex stuff is what happens over here in the first for loop. And uh, I don't show what it looks like when I split on it. I don't think I do. Maybe I do. Yeah, I think I print that out too. So if we come down further. We'll see here's what it looks like after it's been split. So we no longer have that colon in there. And then um, after that, we pull that all that content and we basically put it into a, because right now that's in a, um, a multi-dimensional array. We loop through that multi-dimensional array, pull up the subarrays. So we make this one stream of text here. And uh, that's what you just saw. That was the print packet. That's the stuff. And we take it and turn it into a byte array. And we save that to a byte file right down there. Now, it doesn't show up in my uh, IDE immediately, but if we were to reveal in Finder, we would see that I do have a raw file now called test.raw. And this is the audio file that was uh, the raw audio file that was stripped out. So what do you do with a raw audio file? Well, sure there isn't a lot of players that will play raw audio, but SOX, the command line tool, actually will convert raw audio to a uh, WAV file or whatever you prefer. And uh, I guess that's it for this code walkthrough. Um, the code is available. It's on GitHub, and I'll put the link to it in uh, this description in case anybody cares. Thank you for watching.